everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Samantha Ganser. I'm going to be your show host for you guys today. We have a great show for you guys. We're going to be covering the Mayor LPGA Classic, recent WNBA games, the U.S. Women Olympic Trials updates, some NWSL updates as well. And make sure you guys stay till the end to hear about the official completed roster for the U.S. rowing team for the Olympics. Before we start, I wanted to ask you guys to like and follow the show and to become a part of our show to tip and donate using the link gsmcpodcast.net. You can um, also get your questions to the top of the list because we do get a lot of questions and comments that come from viewers during the show. So by using this link, your questions and comments go at the top of the list so that I see them and they get read on the air. Your support also means a lot to us and we really do appreciate it. It makes a huge difference. Again, the link is gsmcpodcast.net. Now, let's get started. I hope you guys enjoy today's content. Okay, so we're going to be starting today's episode by talking about the Mayor LPGA Classic. And I am really hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've been saying it correctly all day and now I feel like as soon as I started this live stream, I can't pronounce it. Anyway, the, the classic. Okay, so it took place from the 13th to the 16th. This is an annual competition, and the competition this year took place at the Blackfield Country Club or the BCC at Belmont, Michigan. So let's start with first round. Obviously, that would be a great place to start. Okay, so at the end of the first round, Allison Lee was the leader at negative seven after 18 holes while holding a two-shot lead over nine golfers at negative five. Lee said her biggest strength that day was her putter. She said she was satisfied at the end of a round one, and I mean, I would be too if I was leading. <laughs> after round run, though, wow, after round one, there was a huge tie for second. Like, typically, this typically happens after round one, I feel like. Brooke Henderson was one of them in the tie. Second place finished their round at negative five. Brooke Henderson had a strong back nine, including an eagle on 18 to finish the round at negative five. After round one, Henderson said, it was extremely windy. It was really tough to judge. I feel like the first few holes, I didn't hit a fairway and was really getting up and down. It made a lot clutch par saves, which really kept the momentum and the round going. Then making that eagle at eight, you know, got me under par, got me feeling a lot better. And I was able to make some birdies on the back. So it was playing really tough today. So I feel like minus... Five in the afternoon wave was a bit of a bonus, so I'm happy and hopefully just carry it forward. Other notable golfers that were second were Naren Ann, Suze Chai Chang, Jennifer Kupcho, and Carlotta Singanda. Okay, so round two took a little bit of a turn. Not really, though. Um, Three time, okay, actually, it kind of did. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, that's up to your judgment. So three-time LPGA Tour winner Ali Ewing shot the round of the week through 36 holes with a 9 under 63. Moving from 33rd after her first round 70, Ewing sits in a tie for the lead at minus 11 alongside young Aussie star Grace Kim, who went 68-65 in rounds 1 and 2 to put herself in prime position heading into moving day. So yeah, I guess you could say it took a little bit of a turn. Ewing started the day just before Kim teeing off on number one in the morning wave and sinking two birdies right off the bat. She added another on the par three fifth and then made an impressive eagle on the par five eighth, her second of the week on that hole, but in a completely different fashion. After making the turn in 31, Ewing added four more birdies on the back to come in at 63, tying her career low round on the LPGA Tour and her career best 36 hole score with 133. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the course, Kim was also going low, getting off to a hot start with birdies on numbers 11, 12, and 14. She dropped a shot with a boogie on 17, but quickly made up for it and then somewhat with an eagle on 18. After a frustrating streak of five straight parts, she finally sank three consecutive birdies on 6, 7, and 8 to finish 7 under on the day and minus 11 overall. It wasn't long ago that Kim last held a 36-hole lead at the JM Eagle LA Championship presented by Plast Pro, which was really recent, really. Kim dominated the field at Wilshire Country Club during rounds one and two, but ultimately finished um, a tied at 25th after two tough rounds on the weekend. Hunting for her second LPGA Tour victory, Kim is t- taking each opportunity at the top to, quote, learn how to win, and that's what she said. There was indeed a stacked leaderboard behind 
Ewing and Kim with uh, Nana Korars Madsen and Naren Ann just behind them at minus nine and in a tie for third. Five players follow them at fifth, including Allison Corpez and Henderson. Jin Yan, who is the only player in the field to go boogie free in both rounds at Bifo Country Club, is also among those tied for fifth with Saturday ahead. 81 players made the cut at minus two, including defending champion Leona Maguire and 2015 Mayor LPGA Classic champion Lexi Thompson, who missed the cut in her last four starts on tour. Notables to miss the cut are six-time 2024 tour winner Nelly Korda and major champion Minji Lee, and those two were probably where the turn happened here, Um, just because that was not expected. I actually made a video last week saying who exactly to watch (laughs) um, in this tour, like keep your eye on because these players are really great typically, and it's not that they had a bad round. Well, I guess they technically did, but it was just unexpected (laughs) so round three showed a great performance by australian grace kim kim pulled clear of the field firing a six under par 66 to open up a commanding five shot lead heading into the final round started the third round alongside ali ewing at the top of the leaderboard after 36 holes but the 23 year old from sydney produced another dazzling round to put clear daylight between her and the chasing pack in her pursuit of a second clear lpga tour win she rattled off a trio of birdies on the 5th, 6th, and 7th holes to reach the turn 3 under for the day, 14 under overall. There was a hiccup on the par 5 10th but when she took a boogie, but she was soon back into the groove with birdies on the 13th, 15th, and 16th holes before extending her advantage to 5 shots by rolling in a 6-foot birdie putt on the par 5 18th. Kim revealed afterwards she had been determined to avoid a repeat of her performance in Los Angeles earlier this season when she led by four strokes after 36 holes, only to blow up with a five under par 76 in her third round. So she had a lot of pressure on her. Overnight, co-leader Ewing, meanwhile, could have stayed in striking distance of Kim, but two late boogies on the 15th and 17th holes dropped her into a cluster of five players on 12 under. Ingwing, who finished with a 1 under par 71, is tied for second alongside Sweden's Anna Nordquist, Naren and Americans Allison Corpus, and Lexi Thompson after this uh, round ended. Thompson and Nordquist took advantage of benign conditions to shoot 7 under par 65, the lowest scores of the third round. Thompson's round included an incredible streak over the front nine where she reeled off four straight birdies, followed by an eagle and a birdie to make the turn at 7 under. So round four was the final round on Sunday. Uh, This was very interesting. This was kind of a twist here in a way. Lily Vu ended up coming on top. I did not not expect this. But again, every single time I get a call prediction, I'm always wrong, I feel like. And this was a great win for her as she was coming back from a bag injury and spoiling Lexi Thompson's bid for her first victory in five years. So it was pretty brutal. Playing for the first time since the Ford Championship in late March in Arizona, Vu beat Thompson and third round leader Grace Kim with a five foot birdie putt on the third extra hole. Vu birdied the par 5 18th in regulation for a 7 under 65, then twice more to match Thompson and Kim, who entered the day five strokes ahead of Thompson and a clear Vu on the first two playoff holes. On the deciding hole, the 27 year old former UCLA star hit her second shot into the bunker to the right of the green and blasted out to set up the birdie thompson and kib missed long birdie tries after laying up following errant drives vu said i think this is the most meaningful win because there was a time two months ago where i was just crying on the range not being sure if i'd ever play tournament again without pain like to be here today it's just incredible Thompson, the 2015 winner, has said that this will be her last year playing a full schedule. She won the last of her 11 LPGA Tour titles at the ShopRite LPGA Classic in June 2019. And she said, it was an amazing day out there. The golf was one thing, but just to be able to play in front of all amazing fans, especially coming down the stretch and on the playoff holes, I don't think I've heard cheers like that unless it's like the Solheim Cup. So to finish off this recap, let's just quickly go over the final scores and placements and their prize money. It was a $3 million purse, which is absolutely, I always just, hearing how much money that is, I always just assume that I go to the first place winner like $3 million. I don't know why, but like that's just always what I assume. And then I like hear the prizes and I'm like, oh wait, that's not how that works. Anyway, don't know if that's just me that just always thinks that as soon as I hear like prize money, but <laughs> so in first was Vu, like I said, she won $450,000. Tied at second was Thompson and Kim, like I said, both winning a prize of $234,649. Allie Ewing was in fourth, winning 
$152,634, and fifth was Allison Corpas and Naren Ann, both winning $111,685, and seventh was Kristen Gilman, taking home $84,136. Tied at 8th was Ayaka Faru, Athia Thetical, Ryan O'Toole, and Allison Lee. They each won $64,032. And then tied at 12th was Eugen Sung, Georgia Hall, Paula Rito. And I'm so sorry, I'm so going to say this name incorrectly, and I sincerely apologize. Netha Krita, Bong Tao Vila, and Anna Nordquest winning $46,162. Tied in 17th is Hera Navid, Laura Hartledge, Gabriella Ruffles, Nana Corris Madsen, Carlota Singanda, Natalia Guseva, Aditi Ashok, and Alexa Panna winning a prize of $33,803. Tied at 25th is Uriah Jutin Nugarn, Marina Alex, Jin He M. Jin Yam and Yuna Neshomuru taking home a prize of $26,358. So we're now going to move on to our next segment where we recap recent WNBA games. This is probably one of my favorite segments of today, so I recommend staying around for that. Before we get into that, we're going to be taking a very short break, so I will see you all very soon. <laughs> 